Join me for the new show. I'm bringing you entertainment, guests and advice on health and beauty. We all need inspiration now. We will look at how to live your life and love your life. Welcome to The Halima Show and today is our first episode. So thank you so much for joining us and we have an amazing guest today. I'm so excited to introduce you to her. Um, she has been in the industry for at least 24 years. She's got a wealth of knowledge and not only has she been in this beauty industry, she has then gone on to fight cancer and build an amazing life. Let me introduce you to the amazing Zainab Mirza. Hello, Assalamualaikum. Welcome, Aslam. How are you? How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Thank How are you, you so much for having me. No, thank you for coming. I'm, I'm really happy that you're our first guest. Um, I really? just want to say I'm so honoured, I'm so humbled. Thank you so much. No, thank you so much. Um, so tell us, Zainab, we haven't got so long, so just talk us through. The first thing I'd like to ask you is, what got you into the makeup world? I think that's always interesting to people. Um, I think for me it was, um, ever since I was... I think ever since I could remember, sort of 10, 11, um, I was really fascinated by makeup, by my mum's makeup, um, you know, and I remember my brother got married when I was 11, and when my sister-in-law came into the house, you know, um, there was no one to do her makeup, so I was like, yeah, I'll do it, you know, and at 11, I remember sort of just um, grabbing all my mum's makeup, and you know, you didn't have makeup artists back then or anything, it was your cousins, your sisters, you know, stuff like that, and I think that's... I got into it just sort of purely by chance, um, the excitement of, yeah. yes, I want to do it, and, you know, sort of going through my teenage years, I was the girl in the bathroom doing all her friends' makeup, um, and I think I got to, um, you know, sort of after my GCSEs, um, I realised that, you know, I didn't want to go to uni, I didn't yeah. want to do anything, I wanted to go to beauty school. Oh, okay. Um, so I knew, you yeah. know, from I think when I was about 16 that this is what I wanted to do. And did you know you wanted to do bridal specifically or just any no, makeup? Um, I, uh, makeup was the fascination, yeah. but back then, um, you know, makeup schools weren't popular at okay. all, yeah. so beauty was the route into makeup, so it was a part of beauty oh, okay. therapy. Yeah. So I trained yeah. as a beauty therapist and then sort of went on and did massage and yeah. you know, all the kind of aromatherapy, you know, all, all the um, therapies that go alongside yeah. beauty. Um, but makeup was sort of where I wanted to be. Um, and then I sort of started working with, um, you know, sort of like makeup brands in yeah. London, in the department stores, getting training. What was the most exciting brand you worked with? I think for me it was Chanel, okay. um, oh. but also I have to say when MAC launched in the UK in Harvey Nichols, oh my I worked on that launch wow. campaign, okay. um, So and that's when I sort of discovered what trendy okay. makeup was, because <laughs> before it was all classic, yeah. Lancome, Chanel, you know, YSL. This is creative. Then, yeah, and yeah. then MAC came in and it really appealed um, to my creative juices, yeah. so yeah, so, uh, you know, just that whole even seeing it from a makeup artist point of view, you yeah. know, how makeup changed from being very posh, very kind of, you know, yeah. expensive, glamorous. Because I remember when I, when I, because obviously I'm a makeup artist, I've done it for how long, but when I first joined, I saw your products on one of the wedding exhibitions, we're looking at maybe 12, 14 years ago, yeah. and it was Provoke Cosmetics, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, it was. and um, I, people were like, oh yeah, that's really big, that's really big. <laughs> but it was, I remember your campaigns were quite bright. Do you know, um, we always wanted, so I mean, the my makeup brand came sort of 10 years after okay. I started as a makeup artist, and it was born out of this kind of need of, um, you know, there still wasn't stuff that Asian, Arab, like my clients were still struggling, yeah. even with MAC, you know, they were a brilliant brand, but you know, there were still things that were missing, and so one day I just thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do this, so good. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and to be able to compete with mainstream, you know, my campaigns have to be edgy, yeah, edgy. they were a little bit provocative, but it was the idea, yeah, exactly. Exactly. and the idea was to get people talking, yeah. you know? and if we were going to compete on that kind of international arena, yeah. we had to make sure that we, you know, we, we stood up to it, so, so yeah. it worked, so I still remember it, that was, <laughs> that was when I first started, that's oh. amazing, and then obviously you've progressed from makeup into doing further things, you've written books, um, you've met so many people. Um, what's, 
Okay, so I've got quite a few questions. Okay. Uh, you ready? What was, um, what's been the driving factor that made you decide, you know, you're not just going to be the run-of-the-mill makeup artist that everybody else is? What, what do you think made you stood out? What was the reason that made you stand out? And what actually made you stand out? Do you know, I think with me, it was, I've always had tunnel vision. So for me, it's like my eye is just on my goal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just focused. I've Honestly, I don't, I don't look left. I don't look right. I don't know who else is doing what. I've never even been consumed by it. For me, it was, it's, I wanted to reach for the stars. Yeah. Um, and I had a bit of a, um, sort of like an underlying mission because when I got into beauty, my parents faced a lot of criticism okay. because everyone around me was going to university and they were like, oh, okay, so you, your daughter's a hairdresser, you know? And so it, it was beauty this therapy. kind of beauty, <laughs> beautician. And it was like an insult from my parents, yeah. you know? And suddenly, you know, I kind of got into makeup and then, um, because I was quite young compared to all the makeup artists that were around at the time, um, you know, I started getting like magazine work, I started getting newspaper sort of columns and things like that. And I think I sort of, quite early on realized that I, I can really mm. do something with this yeah. so I just always you know once I became a makeup artist I wanted a brand you know once I created yeah. a brand you know it was like I wanted a school yeah. you know and it's just I've always just wanted to do one better than what I've already do, done. Do you think part of that is because of your parents sort of cynic, is it cynicism towards the makeup industry? Well I think so my dad didn't talk to me for like three months I think it was when I joined beauty but after that, he became my biggest fan. That's every nice. campaign, every business card, every article. That's important. He, he had a folder of all my stuff, you know, yeah. and it was. And I remember him kind of going, that's my daughter, Aww. you know. And, uh, you know, mashallah, it was really nice to see that I'd made them proud yeah. in a field that wasn't acceptable. Just an Asian industry. In the Asian industry. Yeah. And then suddenly I started getting relatives calling me to say, my daughter doesn't want to go to university or she doesn't want to go to college, she wants to do beauty. Can you recommend where oh, she should yeah. go? And we're not sure, you yeah. know, and it became acceptable. Mm. Um, and it was amazing, you know, to, to be able to have brought about some change. And trust. And trust, yeah. yeah. It's not actually a dirty, seedy, dumb profession because you actually have to study quite a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a, a lot, lot of, of studying that people <laughs> don't realise. Yeah. And I think, you know, one thing, I remember an uncle had come over from Pakistan and his daughters were studying to be doctors or were doctors. And I was reading uh, Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. And he said to me, sorry, aren't you a beautician? And I said, yeah. And he said, so why are you reading Grey's Anatomy? So, because I need to understand the, the whole skin, body, the, the skin, yeah. you know, and it, it, it's, he was so impressed and he said to me, you know, Bitter, I've got so much respect for oh, you today and, good. you know, it's yeah. lovely to see those kind of yeah. um, change of opinions. Yeah, oh brilliant, I hope more people watch this and learn <laughs> from that. Um, and then, so how, and then, okay, so you've, you've blossomed and bloomed and been so successful in the beauty industry, um, but then you've also faced some struggles, I mean we all do challenges, yeah. you maybe a little bit more than others, <laughs> um, would you like to talk to us about what you've then gone on to face and how you fought it? Yeah, and where you so um, 2013, um, towards the end of 2013, um, after sort of quite a you know, while of being unwell, um, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, okay. um, so that came as a massive shock yeah. because it was you know, just not what I expected to be the outcome of what I've been going through. Yeah. Um, so that was quite a long, tedious, um, really, really hard battle because I was given a grade, um, uh, yeah, a grade four um, okay. diagnosis. What's grade four? So that's basically um, where they thought it had spread to my other organs. Okay. Um, and, you know, I was given this kind of, you know, what, what five year scenario and, mm -hmm. you know, it was actually really, that's really, stressful scary because yeah. I actually thought I was going to die yeah. you know and at that point my daughter was only six oh um, so it was quite you know sort of quite scary to, to, to have been given that but alhamdulillah Allah had you know different plans and yeah. you know to what I thought it was and um, it, it it was not a misdiagnosis but actually what they thought had spread was just benign okay um, so I kind of came back from a you know yeah. from that and um, yeah, that's that's scary you know, in itself, it was scary. I mean, it, was, yeah. it was really, really. Just, so that that kind of whole journey was about six to eight months, okay. um, and then I started getting better. And then you know, a year and a half after that, two thousand and fifteen, um, I was diagnosed with kidney cancer. Oh, gosh. So it was like the whole thing coming back. And I think the second time was worse than the first because the second time I actually did believe I was going to die. Okay. I was like, there's no way. There's yeah. you know, this isn't. This is not going to happen. 
but again, alhamdulillah, you know, yeah. sort of came back out of that. And what yeah. did you do work-wise then while you were struggling? Well, everything, you know, like um, mm. sold, you know, so yeah, yeah, the makeup brand, working. well, yeah. I, you know, the makeup brand was sold, yeah. you know, like there's no way I could carry on with such a stressful, you know, environment. It yeah. just wasn't going to happen. Yeah. So yeah, so, you know, I did sort of try and carry on with what I was doing, mm. um, but it became harder and harder. And after the second cancer, um, I struggled a lot with mobility. Okay. So it literally there's no way, changed go it. Around there's no makeup way I could go back to yeah. being a full time makeup artist. Yeah. But it's but so so you've done all that, you've you know, been the top of your game, you've fought cancer. <laughs> what more can you do in life? So where are you now with everything then, Zaina? So um following the cancer and then you, you know, sort of having this thing inside you which is you know when the burning that burning thing you know, you know when you when you, when you've lived something your entire life it's yeah. really hard to give it up so I started um focusing on like writing so I was blogging a lot more I was writing articles a lot more um but then I sort of still wanted to do something so um in the I beauty line yeah in yeah. the beauty line so then I sort of um and my daughter was growing up as well and you know she was sort of getting experimental and it just started like that you know just started sort of making products that she would use, that she could use. Then her friend started asking, and it literally, Gosh. what I mean, an organic Escalated, business was yeah. born out of like an organic idea. Yeah, um, yeah so I kind of gave birth to Aww. a new baby. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm sort of now working on this whole um, natural, clean yeah. beauty. And this is this cosmetology. Cosmetology, yeah. yeah, which basically means the science of cosmetics. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, I just, yeah. so yes, now what we do is, um, you know, we've got a completely clean, organic, uh, non-toxic beauty brand um, for adults, but our main focus is actually children, okay. so we do a lot of fun products for kids, okay. I mean, you know, really, yeah. really funky, food inspired. Um, yeah, because I looked through your Instagram, yeah, it was so, so good. Yeah, a lot of good. food inspired yeah. products for kids, um, you know, and also obviously, you know, our teen range is quite funky. Yeah. Um, you know, but everything is 100% natural, all clean. So, um, yeah. It's you know, so good. Thank, thank you, you so, so much for being here. Yeah. So, so that's our Luxe Rosie. range, yeah. So, yeah. the Rosie is part of Bart our Luxe so. range um, in our artisan um, okay. sort of collection. Luxury but range. yeah, so. Shimmer uh, body oil. That's amazing. We all need a bit of shimmer in our lives. Yeah. I think everybody needs shimmer in our Everyone lives. Everyone needs shimmer in their lives. <laughs> and, um, um, so yeah, so that's what we're doing right now, you know, just staying connected to beauty, yeah. but in a much more clean, um, you know, and, and natural way. And um, we all, I also wanted to touch base on just a quick uh, overview on what your daughter's doing as well. Yeah, so I think, you know, um, a friend of mine just recently said, you know, the apple really doesn't fall far Aww. from the tree, so thank you, Rook. Um, and it, it's, I think she's kind of just seen and worked with me over the last few years. Cosmixology, a lot of the teen and children's ideas actually come from her. Okay. So she's like, Mummy, we've got to do this. We've got to have a unicorn oh, range. We've got to have so Iman. Iman. Um, so we've got to have, you know, a, 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 a mermaid range. You yeah. know? So a lot of That's so cool, because obviously it's teenage range. It's a teenage yeah. range, yeah. So, you know... Um, and then sort of last couple of years, you know, she's really wanted to do something and she, you know, she does a lot of like, um, she's really crafty. Yeah. So a lot of like custom made yeah. stuff for herself. Okay. Um, and then during lockdown, you know, we just sort of sat down one day and she said, mommy, I really want to do this. Yeah. And uh, yeah, she started working on so creating cool. her own brand. Yeah. Um, and we launched it last month. Oh, wow. Um, well, how many teenagers in lockdown have created a whole business? So that's really good. That's really inspirational because I think other kids were just eating food and <laughs> playing games. Um, thank you so much, Zaina. We've run you. out of time. Um, but if you could perhaps look into the camera and tell everyone where they can find you and your, and your brand, it'd be really good. Yeah. So we're on Instagram, on Facebook at Cosmixology UK. So forward slash Cosmixology UK. Um, and if you want to follow my journey, that's at Zainab Mirza. Thank you so much, Dana, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. We've had a fabulous time getting to know Zaina Mirza, and now we go on to the next segment, my favourite, the beauty side of life. Let's get to it. So last week, I got to do makeup at the Shangri-La Shard. It was an amazing experience, really fabulous. So thank you to the Shangri-La for that. Um, in this clip, let me just go through what I've been doing um, with the makeup. I used a Pat McGrath palette. Um, Pat McGrath is one of my favorite brands at the moment when it comes to eyeshadow and, and color. Um, this is one of the other palettes. Um, on that palette, I've used the latest edition. It's a rose uh, pink edition. 
and I have done the green shimmery on the eyelid, a little bit of a darker shade in the corners, and then another soft colouring on the socket line. So that's what I did with the eyelids. But before we even get to eyeshadow, there's a really important step that I feel a lot of people are not doing. Um, I deal with clients all the time, and I don't think enough people are using an eye primer um, or a colour corrector. So the eye primer, there's so many brands right now. I mean, Hourglass has come out with one, um, NARS has got one, they've even got a tinted one. Urban Decay has got a really good eye primer. I've been using that for at least, I don't know, 12, 14 years. Um, so you put that on a very thin layer and then that keeps the rest of your makeup intact the whole day. It won't crease, your eyeshadow won't transfer, um, and the colour stays the same, really pigmented. So it's really good to invest in an eyeshadow primer. Um, and again, my favourite at the moment is basically the, the, the Urban Decay one. So once you've done eye primer all over your lid, then you may need to use a colour corrector. Again, you can get orange colour corrector if you're a darker skin shade um, with a little bit of greyness in your eyes. You can get orange colour corrector. If you're a more uh, lighter skin tone, you may find a lot of like blue blood vessels on your eyelid and then you may want to colour correct that with a little bit of a greener tone. So you just need to find which colour corrector is best for you. Um, LA Girl is a really cheap, cheerful you know, colour corrector that I use. Um, you can order that on Amazon or anything. It comes in a little tube. Um, you can put that after your Urban, Urban Decay Potion Primer. Once you've done that, and these are very thin layers by the way, you don't want to be putting too much product on your eyes. Once you've done that, you can then go over with a really good concealer. I, um, at the moment, I'm using Huda Beauty or um, the Too Faced Born This Way um, sorry, uh, concealer, and there's also Tarte. Um, and recently I went and bought the Fenty concealer. I mean, in this current climate, a little bit hard to test things. But you can see the consistency on the tissue and ask your advisor at the, at the uh, department stores to maybe just uh, put it on a, on a cotton bud so you can try it or on a tissue. Um, but you have to try it before you buy these things. Um, so I like this one because I think it's got good coverage but it's not too drying. So this is the Fenty Beauty one. And again with concealer you may want to buy two colours. One a little bit lighter for under your eyes one your skin tone for your eyelid so that's the that's the uh, concealer once you've done that that's when you go ahead and and do your eyeshadow um, and i think i've used uh, eyelashes on amelia as well um, and with the eyelashes again not everybody uses eyelashes you could just mascara straight through um, go for natural first and build it up some you know if you've never used eyelashes before just see how it goes um, a lot of people use the duo glue, I just tend to use the Eyelio one uh, that comes with the box um, because it's a little bit more gentle and you can easily peel them off and put them in the bin or you can use them again, it's not a problem. Um, and then that was it really, I mean I did the eyebrows and the rest of the makeup. And again, if you've got any questions on any of this, let me know, email me, message me, you've got all ways to, all ways to reach me now if you've got questions about this clip or anything in the future, let me know. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you found that useful and inspiring. Please do subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Halima Show, and follow all our credits for Instagram and Facebook.